dear viewers, welcome. This video is the first of a series of 11, in which our team from the Research Center Crates from the University of Namur will delve into the newly adopted AI Act, also known as the Regulation on AI. Through this project, we seek, firstly, to provide viewers with general information and background on the context and content of the AI Act. Secondly, to help all stakeholders interested in AI, including SMEs wishing to develop or integrate AI solutions in their business, to better understand how it will be regulated in the near future, and thirdly, to provide early guidance for those who will need to design new compliance processes. To do so, in the following minutes, I will explain the basics of the AI Act. For instance, I will explain what an EU regulation is, touch upon the context of its adoption and describe some of the main notions used in the AI Act. I'll also highlight to whom it will apply and when. Next to these developments, in later videos, our team will address questions such as what is the risk-based approach? How is it used to categorize AI systems and determine the legal obligations applicable to them? Are there policies to help AI developers who want to integrate third-party large language models in their own systems? Can businesses use copyrighted online content to train large language models? And under which conditions? Do public services provide personalized help to achieve compliance when developing risky AI systems? And many others. First things first. The AI Act is an EU regulation, which means that it is a type of law, but at the European Union level. It is meant to apply as is, directly, so without any intervention from the EU member states, once it will become applicable. We'll come back to that notion later on. The AI Act being a regulation means that it must be respected by both public authorities and private entities, so undertakings and individuals alike. It also means that the AI Act can be invoked in front of national courts during litigations and can be used by claimants against public and private opponents likewise. Concretely, the AI Act has the same legal nature as the widely known GDPR, so the General Data Protection Regulation. The AI Act was passed in June 24, more than three years after it was originally proposed. The legislative proposal itself was a political priority of the EU since late 19. This time frame, including the length of the political negotiations, gives clues as to the importance of the topic and its sensitive nature. The main objectives pursued by the EU legislators through the process can be summarized as promoting innovation and the uptake of AI, improving the free flow of AI systems and services in the Union, and ensuring the protection of health, safety and fundamental rights through human-centric and trustworthy AI. The text legally defines a lot of notions, nearly 70, which are essential to understand the scope of and the requirements laid down in the regulation. Let's go through some of them, which are relevant to describe the scope of the text and summarize their major elements. One of the core notions of the regulation is that of AI system. It is a software characterized by its autonomy and its ability to infer from given inputs how to generate outputs, such as predictions, contents, etc. Both expert systems and machine learning methods are targeted. All those systems based on the rules defined solely by natural persons to automatically execute operations are excluded. Another key concept in the regulation is that of general purpose AI models. These machine learning models are trained with massive amounts of data, can be used in a variety of domains, and perform well for a wide range of tasks. They can be integrated into diverse systems downstreams, in particular, general purpose systems. For instance, ChatGPT is a general purpose AI system, whereas GPT-4, the model upon which the system runs, is a general purpose AI model. The major actors targeted by the text are providers and deployers of AI systems. Providers of AI systems are any entities, natural or legal persons, as well as public bodies, that develop AI systems or general purpose AI models, or that have such systems or models developed on their behalf. They market, are put into service, those systems or models under their own name or trademark. Deployers are any entities using an AI system under their own authority, accepted for personal and non-professional activities. For instance, considering Copilot, Microsoft is the provider of the AI system, 
as it is marketed under Microsoft's trademark, although Microsoft did not develop all technological components in-house. Any entity that uses Copilot in a business perspective is a deployer of the system. On top of that, the AI Act also defines notions such as importers and distributors of AI systems. An importer is an entity that places an AI system on the EU market under the name or trademark of someone else who is established outside the EU. A distributor is another actor in the supply chain who makes an AI system available on the union market. Besides these definitions, one more important notion must be discussed, that of affected persons. They are not defined in the text, but can be described as any person who faces consequences next to the use of an AI system. Based on the notions described so far, we can now turn to the scope of the regulation, so whom it applies to and when. The AI Act is meant to apply to, firstly, providers of AI systems when they put on the market or put into service AI systems in the EU, as well as providers of general purpose AI models when they put on the EU market such models. Their place of establishment or location is irrelevant as long as they operate in the EU market. Secondly, deployers of AI systems when they are located in the EU. Thirdly, providers and deployers of AI systems outside the EU whenever the outputs of the AI systems are used in the EU. Fourthly, importers and distributors of AI systems. Fifthly, manufacturers of products, including AI systems, when marketed under their own trademark. Sixthly, affected persons located in the EU, but they are not subject to obligations. They rather benefit from rights under the AI Act. Given the broad definitions adopted in the regulation, the number of actors in the supply chain targeted, and the extraterritorial reach of the text, so the fact that it can be applicable outside the EU, the AI Act has a very broad scope of application. However, it also contains several exemptions. For instance, AI systems entering specific fields already covered by EU sectoral legislation, such as civil aviation security, approval and market surveillance of vehicles, marine equipment, etc., are exempted from most of the obligations imposed by the AI Act. Besides, AI systems and AI models put into service for scientific research and development are also exempted. It is equally the case for most AI systems released under free and open source licenses. Obviously, the AI Act does not apply to research, testing and development activities taking place before marketing either. Furthermore, the AI Act does not apply to areas outside of EU law, meaning that AI systems used for military, defense or national security purposes are not subject to the regulation. Since August 2nd, 2024, the AI Act entered into force, but it is not applicable yet. Its provisions will start to apply in a differentiated manner so that stakeholders can design and implement compliance processes in a reasonable time frame. Some will be applicable from February 2nd, 2025, for instance, the rules on forbidden AI practices, whereas other rules will apply from August 2nd, 2026, that is to say, most of the provisions of the regulation. The last provisions to apply will have to be complied with from August 2nd, 2027. Thanks for watching, stay tuned.